This video is about elasticity and we are going to learn what the big picture is for elasticity, develop the elasticity formula, interpret the values of elasticity, and then complete one example problem. In this particular section, we are going to look at the, the price elasticity of demand. And this is a measure of how sensitive the demand is to changes in price. And so we use the letter E for elasticity. And the price elasticity of demand is equal to the percent decrease in demand over the percent increase in price. So this gives us a ratio of how much decrease do we have in the demand compared to the increase in price. Suppose we're trying to sell some item and we're trying to set the price so that we earn the most revenue. We have found that if we increase the price then our demand decreases. That's just at the law of supply and demand. But maybe that price increase makes up for the lost demand and then maybe it's a good idea to increase price. So increasing that price was a good idea. Or maybe that increase in price doesn't make up for the lost in de loss in demand and our revenue ends up going down. And if that's the case, we, we definitely don't want to increase the price. We, we want to lower that price. And so we need to figure out when we have a price and, and a demand relationship, what should we do? Should we increase that price or should we decrease that price in order to make our revenue as much as we can? When this price increase makes up for the loss in demand, we say the demand is inelastic. So this we have this word inelastic, and that's this situation. So we have inelastic. And when the price doesn't make up for a lot, the loss in demand, the loss is too big, then we say the demand is elastic. Let's derive the elasticity formula. So our elasticity is the ratio of the percent decrease in demand to the percent increase in price. So let's first figure out how we could describe that percent decrease in demand. It's easiest to see how this works if we start with a concrete example with actual numbers. So suppose we have a demand of 50 units and then we have a decrease of one unit. Then the percent decrease in demand is going to be that decrease of one unit the ratio of that to the 50 um, or of the original demand and that ends up being a, a decrease percent decrease of negative two percent so that's how that that percent decrease in demand is calculated so if instead we use just plain old Q and we use Delta Q for the change in demand then we're gonna have delta Q divided by Q is our percent decrease in demand. And we usually think of delta Q as a positive quantity, so in order to make it nate to represent a decrease, we make it negative. So we have negative delta Q over delta over Q. And the percent increase in price is if we use the same idea, delta P over P. Now, we don't need a negative on with this one because we're talking about an increase in price. Next, let's actually build this formula. Again, we have our formulas for our percent decrease in demand and our percent increase in price. And elasticity is the ratio of those two. So if we take those and we divide them, this is what we get. And what I want to do is I want to think of this so that it's written like this. And if you have this, then we have fractions that are being divided. So we would have to invert and multiply this fraction. So that would give us P over delta P. And I want to stick these two together and these two together in fractions. So we're going to have negative delta Q over delta P times P over Q. Now. Hopefully, this quantity right here reminds you of that slope formula that we have for our slope of a line. Remember when you have delta y over delta x? It's the same idea here. And since this is a slope formula, hopefully you're thinking, well, maybe that's a derivative. And if we let delta p go to zero, just like we let h go to zero in that original um, definition of the derivative, 
then this delta Q over delta P is going to go to dQ dP. So as that delta P goes to zero, so as this changes in our price get really small, the delta Q over delta P, the slope of that secant line, will approach the slope of the tangent line, which is our derivative. So here's our formula for the price elasticity of demand. And this is something that you want to make sure to put on your note card. Remember our elasticity is the percent decrease in demand over our percent increase in price. So if our if this fraction is less than one, that means the percent decrease in demand is smaller than the percent increase in price. And if that's the case, our demand is inelastic. Increasing the price was a good idea. Now if our elasticity is greater than one, if this is greater than one, that means this percent decrease in demand is bigger than the percent increase in price. That's how we would get a, a value greater than one. And so then we have the demand is elastic. And that means we've set our price too high and we should decrease that price. Now if our elasticity equals one, then we say we have unit elasticity. And at this particular situation, our revenue will be maximized. And we're going to use this to figure out what value of P will bring us maximum revenue by finding the elasticity formula and then setting it equal to 1 and solving. Now, once you have an elasticity, it's important that you're able to take this number and interpret it. So if we have an elasticity of 0.75, that means there's a 0.75% decrease in demand for every 1% increase in price. You can think of this as 0.75 over 1. So see how it, the numerator is the percent inc decrease in demand and the denominator is the percent increase in price. And if this is the case, our demand is inelastic. If E equals 1.5, think of this as 1.5 divided by 1, that means there's a 1.5% decrease in demand for every 1% increase in price, and our demand is elastic. If E equals 6 over 7, we could think of this as a decimal, but we can just leave it as a fraction. We could say there's a 6% decrease in demand for every 7% increase in price, and if this is the case, this, the 6 over 7 is less than 1, so our demand would be inelastic. Let's look at an example. Demand for a smartphone is found to be given by Q equals 180 minus 0.6P, where Q is the number of smartphones sold in thousands, and P is the price per phone. So the first thing they ask us to do is um, find the price elasticity of demand for two different values of P. So let's figure out what that price elasticity of demand is. So remember the formula for that is negative dq dp times p divided by q. So if we take our elasticity formula from over here, it's q equals 180 minus 0.6p. If we find dq dp, all we're doing is we're taking the derivative of this. The derivative of the 180 is 0. The derivative of the 0.6p is just 0.6, so we're going to end up with negative 0.6. So we're going to plug this in down here. So we have negative, negative 0.6, then we have p over q. And I'm going to put in my value of Q in terms of P. So this gives us 0.6 P divided by 180 minus 0.6 P. So in part A, we're supposed to find what this is when P equals 80. And if you plug in 80, you're going to get 0.6 times 80 over 180 minus 0.6 times 80, and we end up with 48 over 132. And so if I reduce that, that gives me 4 elevenths. So writing, that in term, writing a sentence for that, I would say there is a 4% decrease in demand 
for every 11% increase in price. In part B, we're supposed to go through the same process, but we're supposed to find our elasticity when P equals 250. So we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to plug in our 250 into our elasticity formula. And we get E equals 150 divided by 30, which is 5. So we would say there is a 5% decrease in demand for every 1% increase in price. And in this case, our demand is elastic. Whether your price elasticity of demand is greater than or 1 or less than 1 all depends on that price. In part C, they're asking us to find the price at which the smartphone should be sold in order to maximize revenue. So in order to maximize revenue, that elasticity has to equal 1. We have to be at unit elasticity. So what we can do is we can take our elasticity, 0.6p over 180 minus 0.6p, set that equal to 1. Notice I have a fraction here, and it's always a good idea to get rid of those fractions if we can, and we could multiply both sides by our denominator, and we get 0.6p equals 180 minus 0.6p. Add 0.6p to both sides, and we get 1.2p equals 180. Solving for p by dividing by 1.2, we get p equals 150. So in order to maximize the revenue, we need to set the price at $150 for each smartphone. The last thing they ask us in Part D is to figure out what the actual maximum revenue is. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is remember that the revenue equals the price times the quantity. And we know that our price is $150, but we don't know our quantity. So let's figure that out. So remember, our Q was equal to 180 minus 0.6P. And if we plug in 150, we get 180 minus 0.6 times 150. And that gives us a value of Q equals 90. Now if you go back to the original statement of the problem, our Q is in thousands. So this means we have 90,000 smartphones. So our revenue is going to be 150 times 90,000, which gives us a revenue of $13,500,000. So that's it for this video on elasticity. See you next time.